So this is the screencast for my sound game, Grave Mistake. So firstly, just a bit of information on this game. This game, you play as a, a treasure hunter who has accidentally awakened the ghosts of pirates on an island when you went to steal a amulet. And you have to return the amulet to the altar you found it on to... Uh, lock the pirate ghosts away and beat the game and through the game you are being chased by skeleton uh, crew members and also then the ghosts of pirates as well and the aim of the game is to platform your way through the uh, level <coughs> collecting as much treasure as you can uh, and trapping away souls uh, at certain key points uh, using uh, as the ghosts will chase you uh, following your path directly. Now in regards to sound implementation uh, the game includes a custom C sharp MIDI synth uh, uh, sequencer that uh, I adapted and modified a bit uh, for this implementation. So it takes in the music that I composed and the MIDI files that I exported from Ableton of the music I composed and is able to uh, output uh, a trigger on each note that is played and also send the uh, MIDI value of that note so the um, actual note character and the octave that it's on uh, as well as send out a tick uh, based on the uh, BPM of the track playing and using this, I'm able to create some dynamic sound effect systems uh, to pitch certain sound effects and also to uh, apply some custom uh, visual effects to uh, objects based on this. So I'm just going to jump into the game to show you uh, what it looks like. And I'll talk a bit more about some of the features. So firstly, when you get in, you start on a menu. So if you go to I went to options so you can hear some sound effects there. You can change some effects here. So it would, this will make more sense once we get into the game. Uh, you'll be able to actually uh, bring this options menu up by pausing the game. But we have different channels in our audio mixer. As you can see here, we have a master channel, a channel for dialogue, a channel for music, a channel for sound effects, and then an ambience uh, channel. Uh, you can also then do some video uh, effects. Uh, or options even, so you can change the graphical quality and the resolution. So we're going back here, I'm going to press play and you can hear some sound effects, that's a different sound effect going back and going forward. So after hitting play, as it loads in the level, you get to hear some of the sound effects. We hit escape. Music will pause, the scene will freeze, and you can go into the options. And again, we can change uh, pitches of different sections. So we can change master down, and let's say I put dialogue higher, and up the music, maybe lower sound effects, increase weather, increase the master. So let's go back in and resume. So immediately, you'll see that the trees in the scene will bounce to the beat of the music playing. So each tree is assigned a different uh, note, and when that note is played, it will trigger uh, an animation. So in this case, I'm just using a scale factor, but this can this could trigger anything if you wanted. back into our options menu and increase uh, weather, maybe in ambience, maybe lower the music, lower dialogue. So I'm using a third party uh, rain system. Uh, it's hard to see because uh, my graphics, uh, with this graphics pack, but you can actually see there's visible rain and the rain that's generated will adapt dynamically uh, using this third-party solution 
I'll show it more when we get into the code. So you're creating a thunderclap. So I added my own uh, randomized thunder. So randomly, uh, a random thunder track will play. The other thing that you'll notice is if we again go back into the options and let's say lower the weather, increase the ambience. You can hear some sound effects. Oh, I get an attack there. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so in the trees, each tree has an audio source and it will randomly play one of about 10 or 12. Um, ambient sounds, which include animal sounds and ghostly kind of howls. So, as you can see, as I get further away from any tree, those sounds kind of diminish, almost completely gone. Uh, so that's showing off the 3D sound. So, going back. And raising the volumes up a little bit, so a little louder, but get sound effects up, music, and dialogue, and then ambience a little bit. So the coins uh, will actually pitch shift depending on the note that's playing the sound effects. So let's see if we can hear. So kind of hear it there. I have more coins. Uh, toward, uh, towards a different side of the map, I'll show you. It's easier to hear when you run over a couple of them. The other thing that's hard to notice is these rocks are deliberately changing colour uh, depending on the note that's played. Uh, so a better example of this is over here. So here in this section you'll see that the rocks will trigger and change colour depending on the notes that's playing. So each of these rock, rocks actually uh, is tied to a note and when that note is played it triggers the, the colour to change. Now the exact same uh, system can be used to actually go the other way around which is listen for all notes and then depending on the note adapt it. So the colours that have been generated here are randomly assigned based on the note and the octave. So I can't remember exactly, but uh, the, no the, the note and the octave feed into uh, I think it's a HSL value, and that generates the color. So each note on the on a keyboard uh, would actually generate a different color. So getting into the meat of the game, apart from collecting coins, the goal is to try and get the amulet. Now to get the amulet. You're going to need to trigger these graves. So you'll see there was some dialogue there. Oh, I'm not getting attacked by a skeleton warrior who's also chasing me now. I'm being chased by a ghost and a skeleton warrior. So I'm just going to up the dialogue. Oh. Wow, we're pleased. Finally, after 200 years, the curse has been broken. So I'm after dying there. So I'll just restart. So uh, when the ghosts hit you, uh, they take three of your lives with each hit. Whereas when the skeleton warriors hit you, they take um, uh, one life each time. So here's a bunch of coins. So let's see if we can hear the sound effect changes. Yeah, so you can kind of hear the pitch shift and there we go. Uh, so let's try and do some more of the game. So, let's try. you can hear taking damage sound effects. I'm almost dead again. One die. Wow, we're pleased. Finally, after 200 years. The so, let's jump straight back in. Uh, and let's try and actually win. This is a tough game to beat, uh, but I'll show you what you're meant to be doing. So, if we. Oh, don't get hit. You try the quicker you die. You're gonna recoon to my ears. So Guess we're after spawning me and your a couple of ghosts, and they'll start spewing out dialogue lines at you as they chase you. 
And then these platforms when you run across them. This is impossible. You can run from my crew, but the tide takes us on in the end. So it was hard to see, but they actually went uh, over those and uh, got sucked in, and they had lines of dialogue for when they die. So I'm gonna go down here and try and get some of these. What if the skeleton guy knows them? Wow, we're ah. Fortunately, I killed the ghost. I'll try one more time and then I'll go into the code. Never got ever come into my dear island. Destiny will kind of free and your fate. You think you're winning, but she ain't. There's three, also these treasure chests. I think you're winning, uh, but she ain't. Sound. Rise, and my you brother, when you stride, the quicker you die. Never got ever come into my dear island. You think you're winning, but she ain't. Never got ever come into my dear island, but she ain't. Destiny kind of rise, my brother, when you see it takes his tea. Never got ever come into my dear island. You think you're winning, but she ain't. Destiny kind of me and your fate. Oh, you try no, the quicker you, you try. You run from my crew. This is impossible. Okay, so we're gonna come into my dear island. We're after getting a couple of the ghosts. So we're gonna loop back around so the ghost uh, traces that path again. I'm gonna keep going. There's one more gate we have to get past. And we'll leave this ghost there. He's there. This, one, this, this one needs seven spirits. And. You can run from my crew, but the tide takes us on in the end. Need five now. Okay. There's one over here. Still six times. Oh. Didn't come back. Never got ever come into my dear island. Destiny calls me and your fate. Rise, my brother, and see. Take this tea to lager. Rise, my brother, and see. Take this no. Okay. Let's see. We will be free. So each grave only has one ghost. Rise, my brother, and see. Take this tea to lager. Forgot ever come into my dear island. Destiny, wait. Okay, four more. Can I hear that sound effect shift there? Ah, we're free. Finally up. Okay, I'm trying. So that's basically the main goal of the game. At the end, you do get a scorecard if you win. It's very tricky to beat. Um, I might make another video of me winning it, but I just want to show off some of the code. So firstly, uh, I want to show off my uh, sequencer. So this here is uh, how I am uh, actually mapping MIDI notes to uh, instruments. So this is built off the back of uh, an existing uh, C-sharp C synth project, but I have uh, most of the code in here is mine. It's, it's just kind of my implementation of it. Um, so uh, MIDI file container, MIDI track sequencer, uh, and I think MIDI, that's it actually yeah uh, they're the they're the classes that came with the c sharp synth so this is my implementation so firstly what i do is on start i initialize my indicator libraries so i basically have a list of each note from c c sharp d d sharp all the way up to b so that's kind of covering each note so that includes uh, all octaves it doesn't matter which so uh, after that I then go and get every indicator that's in the scene. So an indicator is the, the script object that I've added that if you want an object to react to a sound, you attach the indicator class. So this here finds all them in the scene and will then 
get the uh, the note value that it's set to because each of these indicators is listening for a specific note but it doesn't matter which octave and it will add them to the corresponding folders. So once that's done back in the start function <coughs> um, the song channels is set up. So song channels is the is the storage uh, of the actual MIDI files. So if I show you in the inspector what this looks like, just open up the corresponding scene. Level one. <coughs> and you'll be able to see this. And if I select the game manager has my uh, yeah it does. So game manager here has an audio source which is where my song is playing, Depth of Five Song, that's the name I call the song, uh, and then it's set to the background music mixer uh, group, um, uh, the music group in the background music mixer. So uh, I can, in my test sequencer here, uh, I can specify how many separate MIDI tracks channels are going on. So I've said four, and I've passed in my four channels, which were generated in Ableton. I also can set the BPM and the current note which is by default set to minus one to begin with because obviously the current note is uh, hasn't, hasn't started playing yet so as the as the uh, scene goes on current note increments each time so you'll know which note you're on which is a handy feature uh, the fact that audio source already has the song on uh, it wouldn't it doesn't actually need to this will should uh, assign it either but basically this here gets a reference to this audio source and when it plays this, it actually starts going through the MIDI notes at this BPM. So uh, once it has the uh, once it has everything set up, uh, reset and play will actually call the sequencer start, which is a function from the C sharp synth, which will uh, which will basically kind of tick each uh, each um, update. So this in the update function <clears throat> for each of our sequencers, so there's a separate sequencer for each MIDI file, uh, it will check to see if the sequencer exists and if it's currently playing, if that star is enabled. And if it is, it'll call this apply messages function, which will uh, tell the sequencer to advance by delta time so it'll know which note it should be on. Then in apply messages, it'll actually go and grab the uh, It'll grab the current note, which is m.data1, uh, and pass it into this function. So uh, the big thing with uh, this is there could be multiple notes being played at once, as, as makes sense in a MIDI file. So this loops through each of those, and for each of those, it, it does this here. So it's the last note of a given instance uh, in each sequencer that will be set to the current note. So this here will actually go through and pass a message called on note on uh, to any and all indicators of the corresponding note bracket and it also passes in m.data1 and the reason I do that is it no it it doesn't only take in the fact that it's a, a C note it, it'll take in the octave data as well so it does this for all the different notes uh, in all instances so then the indicator file which is here uh, on note on sets the uh, variable alive to be true so you know that it's actually running uh, it gets the current note and gets the octave using this function so uh, the way I work it out is uh, if you do modulus 12 you get the note because there is uh, 12 notes and 12 no there were 13 if 13 notes in an octave uh, and when you modulus 12 that gives you from C to B and then the octave this here basically gets you which octave you're on using this function here. So if you take the note which say is set to two, this is notes two, but it's coming from I don't know fourteen. This here will work out that the octave is is one and not zero. Uh, if that makes sense. So if you think the first octave is zero and the second octave is one. So uh, the change color. So if you want to change color, such as the rocks. I'm doing render material, change the color, I'm using the HSV, not HSL as I said, uh, and so I'm saying 1 minus note divided by 11, so because there's 12 notes, 
I'm getting a value uh, that is between 0 and 1 there. And I'm also getting a value between 0 and 1 there because actually the MIDI note range is actually 10 octaves. And that's just set to 1 always. And the debug will put out a value. Now the other thing that's happening in here is it takes in the BPM. And on the update, if the current time is an increment of the BPM, which is what this here long-winded function does, it will uh, call the on the beat function, and on the beat, in this case, will uh, actually uh, set the sway. So sway is the variable for changing the um, the transform scale. So that just that just happens on the beat. So that's that. Uh, the other thing I have is then the dynamic sound effect, which has uh, the play sound effect. And what this will do is it will grab the current note that is being played and it will remove the leading note. So leading note is basically what, 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 what note, what key is the sound effect you're playing? What's the key of that sound effect? You can set that any number between 1 and 11, so that gives you your range from C to, to, to a higher B. Uh, and this here will work out this semitone shift, the difference between the current note and the leading note, and will apply that semitone shift uh, to the pitch. So uh, I googled it and looked up, and if you uh, set the pitch to be uh, 1.05946F to the power of your semitone shift, that there will shift pitch to the corresponding value. So that's what I'm doing there. So that's most of the kind of uh, crazy stuff I'm doing with uh, the sound in my game. So some other implementations is for my menus. Uh, you can see here's main menu. I've got play hover sound, uh, play select sound, which will take the menu audio source. It'll stop it. It'll set the clip and then it'll play. And this is the same in the pause menu. Pause menu has uh, sound effects too. Oh, sorry, not the pause. Uh, settings menu, which the pause menu in the game uses the pause menu with script. Does some stuff, um, which actually I will show you because it does pause sounds. So, uh, yeah. So here you can see play slider sound, and this here is interesting because if the volume is at a limit, I want to play a limit sound, which is that kind of coin sound when you slide a slider to the very end. Otherwise, just play a kind of like a tick, 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 like a, a dragging kind of sound, like a, as if a zip is going. Um, has a hover sound, has a select, and then also has a back sound. Uh, also, you those uh, sliders set the volume for the different um, uh, mixer groups. So that's what's happening here, the audio mixer so that's set float and it's passing in the value. So the actual audio mixer in background music, I have gone into each of these and I've right clicked on the volume and the attenuation and I've exposed the volume. So it's not there currently because it's already done. And then down here you can see exposed parameters and I've renamed them. And then these parameters I'm then being, I'm able to access uh, by saying set float and the name of that and then set the value. So that's what how to my menus are using sound. So if I just jump back to pause menu, because it is doing something semi-interesting. Uh, when you pause the game, I'm calling background music dot pause. So background music is the audio source for background music. Now uh, I'm also pausing uh, the MIDI player by using the time scale. So time scale being set to zero actually pauses the MIDI player as well. And then when I'm resuming time scale setting that to one and unpausing the background music will start the background music and the and the uh, the uh, mini player at the same time now the time scale also then pauses everything in the scene as well but that's just something interesting to take into consideration um, so other sound effects in the game mainly come in the player controller so player has an on trigger enter function which loops through a whole bunch of different types of tags so if the player walks into a coin the coin will call the dynamic sound effect function play sound effect which will get your pitch shifting the same will happen with the treasure chest uh, there is actually no no object in the game that will give you an extra life i never got to implement that 
uh, if you get hit by an enemy uh, during not during a cooldown, uh, you will take damage, and you will uh, play a sound effect. Now there's an attack sound effect, and then there's a loss sound effect. The attack is that kind of grunt noise that you hear, and the loss is the line spoken by the pirate captain, uh, saying that they're they're now free, that you've you've lost, and then the the end screen kind of appears. Uh, similarly, if you win, there is a win sound, and there is a win screen as well that activates, and that's if you pick up the amulet and you walk into the altar while you have the amulet, then you win. So that's how that's how that sound kind of works there. Now, in general, I'm just going to show you the level layout for the game and what I did in regards to audio mixers and what I was attempting to do in different sections. Just jump down to the end. Yep, okay. So, game level uh, consists of small graveyard here, a mountain here that contains the altar on top as you can see here, a bunch of skeletons all kind of dotted around the place, some more graves for pirates, this walkway that leads to an entrance to the beach that you can't actually go to, go through, it's just for this, this level, um, and there's another grave there, and also then the hill off to the left here, which has a bit of the platforming, and this is where the amulet is on top of this hill. So that's the general layout of things. So each coin, as you can see, has a has a three D uh, sound uh, source, audio source, uh, and also actually each each tree has one as well. And this is where you're getting the the ambient sound. So I'll actually show you, the trees do have a, an interesting script called Ambient Tree Sound. I forgot to mention this. Um, okay, changes. Uh, so Ambient Tree Sound is here. So this is fairly straightforward. It takes in a list of audio clips called Ambient Tree Sounds and an audio source, which is itself. It sets up the audio source as the audio source on the component. And starts this coroutine which will go forever and what it'll do is it'll randomly play a clip uh, of audio uh, from so any any of them from zero to the end counts so it'll just pick a random clip it'll play it it'll then wait the length of the clip plus between one and ten seconds and then it'll loop and do this again so you get this kind of you know a uh, kind of more random approach to the sounds and it doesn't all just kind of sound the same. That's what I was going for here. Um, I do this also in the ghost, or what I call doppelganger controller. I call them doppelgangers because the ghosts actually follow your movements exactly. I won't get into the, the code for that to work, but what I will show is the sound effect. So it also takes in a list of dialogue audio. Uh, and then it actually has a public int called speaking delay, which is a deliberate three seconds delay. And it has this core routine called speak, and it works the exact same way, except it uses the fixed speaking delay. And it'll randomly pick lines from that that uh, list of dialogue. So just in general, the project structure, if I go into assets and show you here, I have uh, the main things to take into consideration is this is uh, Rainmaker is the third party rain system I'm using. I've got my scenes folder, I've got my scripts folder, sound assets, we'll go into sound assets and we look we'll go into player. We've got these two are our kind of egg grunts for when we get hit. Uh, UI has a bunch of sounds for menu back, for hover, the get sound, that kind of clicking noise for the slider uh, and the uh, the confirm button. Enemies, there's a couple of kind of ghostly howls which are used in actually in the trees uh, as ambient noise because it didn't actually make sense with the pirates because that's where I have the dialogue. So these are my lines of dialogue that the pirates uh, will say as they chase you. Ambient noise, I've got animal sounds, so I've got a couple of here. So crows, these are these uh, ones here are sourced 
So uh, all sounds here are sourced except for my dialogue. Dialogue is the dialogue I've created. Um, uh, oh, sorry, and the music is is, is mine as well. So the, these are some of the MIDI files that I was using, and that's actually the the um, that's actually the audio mixer itself. Uh, if I go into oh, if I go into my C sharp synth MIDI synth program, I I do have these are the four MIDI files. Uh, to get the MIDI files to work, I had to rename them to .mid .bytes, uh, and this allows them to work with the C# -sharp mid MIDI synth system. And then Deptify is the, the audio file that I created in Ableton. So I'll just open up real quick to show you what I did there. Um, so originally I uh, listened to some music for inspiration, some kind of carnival music, some uh, kind of pirate sea shanties and I ended up with uh, this song so if I just open the open the project you'll be able to see the different tracks that make up this so we've got a couple of tracks here uh, and different segments so mostly it's using uh, piano sounds there is some flute uh, as well and let's play a bit of it coming out of the wrong audio source but uh, I'll just switch that over real quick preferences audio echo should be this one here okay let's try again I sequenced this using a MIDI keyboard and then went in, cleaned up the audio afterwards uh, as uh, audio didn't line up exactly. So once it was cleaned up, I was able to then loop certain segments and then certain other segments then was able to kind of come up with some nice kind of sounds. So that's pretty much it for there. Um, there's not much else to go with. I, I do have a win condition sounds and lose condition sounds as I mentioned uh, for when you complete the game and you'll get a score at the end of the game so it, it is complete it is very tricky because the, the ghosts kill you very easily once you hit them so you have to kind of run past the graves uh, very carefully um, but yeah that's uh, pretty much it and uh, overall I think I hit most of the marks out uh, or most of the points even that I was trying to uh, go for in my original game design doc. I did have to scale it back quite a bit uh, due to the fact of just time constraints um, but I'm pretty happy with what I was able to get implemented. Um, thanks!